All right. Hi, everyone. I see you all logging in at the moment. Um, so welcome. We're very excited for today. Uh, we are going to give it another minute or so just to let a couple of the stragglers log in, get your audio sorted, make sure you're comfortable with Zoom, um, and then we'll officially kick off our session for today. Um, as you know, we're talking DrupalCon Singapore Splash Awards for 2024. It's going to be an absolutely amazing program, and we are super excited. Uh, I see Looks like most of you are now uh, in by the looks of it. Um, so I think we're officially ready to kick off on that note. Um, first of all, welcome to DrupalCon Singapore Splash Awards for 2024. We are talking how to craft an award-winning submission today. Um, I am very excited to have you all joining us and logging in. Uh, I do want to let you know a couple of things. We will take questions, but we're going to leave them till the end of the session. So if you want to pop those into chat or you can ask live, but just leave it to the very end, um, we'll take Q&A. We are also recording the session for today. So if you do need to duck out or you want to sense check something that you heard, we will get that recording out to you in the next couple of days. We just want to do a bit of quality assurance checking first, um, but then you can listen back at your own leisure. Now, on that note, uh, we, first of all, would like to say a huge thank you to Ironstar. They are our Splash Awards sponsor. Ironstar is a premium website host that specializes in Drupal, Node.js, and Laravel digital experiences. And we could not possibly run the Splash Awards without the vision, leadership, and financial support from Michael and the whole Ironstar team. So a big thank you to Ironstar uh, for adding the fun and celebration of all things amazing about Drupal design and development to our upcoming DrupalCon Singapore event. Now for the next slide, we've got a little bit of an agenda to cover through. Um, there, we've basically allocated 30 minutes for today and we're gonna try and do our best to cover everything, um, including the topics you can see on the screen here. As I mentioned, if you've got questions, please pop them in the chat um, and we'll get to them at the end of the presentation. And then also please just keep your microphones muted uh, until we get to questions at the end. And on that note, I'm gonna hand it over to Mike to run you through the program. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you everyone for coming along. My name is Mike Richardson. Uh, I am the chair of the Drupal Asia Steering Committee, part of the team that's putting on DrupalCon Singapore. I'm joined as well as Nicole with Carl and Julia, who are the organizers for the Splash Awards this year. And we are really, really excited to be putting this together. So why enter? The Splash Awards is a really fantastic opportunity for you as Drupal agencies and developers to showcase the work that you do for your clients and for the organizations that you partner with. Um, the awards have been around since 2014, um, and they've been held annually, mostly across Europe, but also in the United States and more recently in the last two years in Australia and New Zealand as part of Drupal South. Um, we are the same team that organizes the Drupal South Awards and we've had a great deal of success and a lot of fun organizing the Splash Awards there. Um, businesses located in the Asia and Asia Pacific region now have the opportunity to showcase their work um, in this, which is the only regional award committed to Drupal and Drupal websites and Drupal projects. Um, I can't see the slide, so I'm a little bit blind here, but Nicole, if you would mind flipping over to the next one. Um, so we're going to talk in this in this webinar a bit about what the entry process looks like, um, the information that you should know before you draw in. So one of the most important things is that you can submit in all categories, but you can only have up to two entries in each category. So for example, you could enter five websites, but only two could be in the corporate category, as an example. There's no, there's no cost associated with entry. You do not need to be a sponsor for DrupalCon in order to enter. Um, you do need to be in, um, you either need to be an agency or a developer that's in Asia or the Asia Pacific region, or you need to be building a solution for a client who's in Asia or the Asia Pacific region. The ceremony will be at the DrupalCon conference um, and it will be an event not to be missed. Um, you don't need to be there to win. But if you are nominated and you are expecting to pick up a prize, you should nominate someone to collect the trophy and the certificate on your behalf. Um, but we do hope that we'll see you there. Um, and it's a bit of an opportunity to get dressed up as well. So Nicole, if you wouldn't mind flipping to the next slide. Um, as we mentioned before, the ceremony itself is held at the end of day one of DrupalCon Singapore. It's open to anyone who has a ticket to DrupalCon Singapore. 
it's going to be a tremendous amount of fun. And we as organizers, and we encourage anyone who's nominated or anybody else who wants to, to get a little bit dressed up, a tuxedo or cocktail dress, a suit, whatever you like, uh, in order to, you know, when you get up on the stage and there's a photo and you're holding your wonderful Drupal South, sorry, Drupal Con Splash Award trophy, that you can show that off in your best and finest attire. Um, so uh, for our finalists and winners, you do pick up a, a trophy and a certificate. The award ceremony is showcased on YouTube. It's publicized as part of DrupalCon Singapore. It's shared on social media, in electronic direct marketing. Um, there's media release, and there's a great deal of prestige and rewards that come with it. We picked out a couple of testimonials from previous winners at Drupal South Splash Awards before. Um, Murray Woodman at Morphed was the winner of the Best in Show Award in 2024 at Drupal South Sydney earlier this year. Best in Show is the highest scoring entry out of all of the categories. And he mentioned that as a team, it was very rewarding to be, to be recognized by our peers in the Drupal community for the work we have done on such an important project for the Australian community. Winning the award has certainly improved our chances of winning work with new clients. And the Splash Awards is a fun night and a great incentive for excellence in the Drupal community. Dave Sparks of Sparks Interactive in New Zealand picked up the 2024 corporate winner this year. And he mentioned, our clients are thrilled with their Splash Award wins. It validates their decision to choose Drupal and Sparks Interactive. It is a tough competition to win and to be among the best of the best is an important, so is as important for their work as it is for ours. It is an accolade of enduring value. And in it, that is something that we hear both within the Splash Awards in Australia and New Zealand, but also that the teams who organize Splash Awards in Europe and other regions, this is part of the main driver for doing it. It creates a much richer relationship with your client because you've won an award for them, but it also gives you an opportunity to go out and, and approach new work and say, we are an award-winning Drupal agency. I am an award-winning Drupal developer. Um, and it's, 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 it's a wonderful outcome in all respects. So let's move on to some of the important information that you need to think of when you're considering entering. The award's broken up into two different types, as websites and open source projects. We're gonna talk mostly about websites in this webinar. And for websites, there's seven categories, government, nonprofit, corporate, publishing, education, and design UX. And then of course, there's the open source category. Um, for government, we're talking about websites and platforms developed for any level of government, state, federal, or local. Political movements also fall into this category. Uh, for publishing, we're talking about sites which are focused on providing media such as news and or through uh, user-submitted content. Um, for open source, we're talking about Drupal projects that make a significant contribution to the Drupal community. Entries in this category don't have to be websites. They can be a module or a theme or an initiative. Um, for nonprofit, we're talking about websites for charities and charitable organizations whose primary purpose is helping people or other worthy causes. For education, we are looking at sites that are educational or promote education or provide an online curriculum or other education services. For design UX, we're looking at websites where the there is a particular focus on the visual design and the intention for it to be beautiful, emotional, and appeal to the senses, and also to have really great accessibility as well. Um, and finally, for corporate, we're talking about websites that serve uh, online identities for businesses, organizations, or professional individuals. Now, although the Drupal Asia Steering Committee is helping to organize the Splash Awards for DrupalCon Singapore, we are not the judges. The judging panel is an independent group, and all submissions will be reviewed reviewed by this professional and impartial panel. They are members of the Drupal community who uh, excel in their fields of expertise. Any panel members who have a conflict of interest in reviewing a submission will not be allowed to vote on any submissions in that track. So for example, if there's someone who works at an agency that's made an entry in the design UX track, they won't be able to make any uh, votes or, or judgments in that track, but they will be able to assign points in other tracks. Um, so we're very, very careful to make sure there's no conflict of interest there. The judges are volunteers and their identities are not revealed until after the award ceremony in order to just ensure that there's nobody kind of tapping on their shoulder and saying, hey, would you mind taking an extra close look at our submission? 
Um, so, and finally, in the end, individual judges' scores are kept confidential. When it comes to websites, we look at five different judging criteria. The concept and strategy is the plan behind the website. Is the concept clear, unique, and consistently implemented? Does the website tell a clear story? Does the chosen strategy and the final elaboration for the end user, sorry, does the final elaboration of the product fit the objectives uh, that served as the starting point for the project? For design and UX, we're talking about everything that's visible for the end user, including UX, motion and visual design on both desktop and mobile, um, as well as accessibility included there as well. Um, judges will be looking for a design that is of high quality, fits the target audience and supports the message that needs to be conveyed. For the technology criteria, we're looking at websites that will be uh, able to demonstrate their speed, their functionality. And in this criteria, the Drupal application is being considered um, quite closely. Has the build, as best as the judges can tell, um, followed best Drupal standards and practices? Is the implementation innovative? Are there integrations with third party systems that were potentially very complicated and should be considered um, in the judging process? For the business case criteria, uh, we're looking for a positive business outcome for the website. Um, has the website increased sales, lowered cost, built awareness, or provided a better brand experience? Do the analytics from that site show that the goals have been achieved or hopefully even exceeded? On community value, um, Drupal is, of course, an open source platform and owes its existence to the community behind it. All submissions will be judged on the value the website returns to this community. This could be via code and code contributions. It could be through modules published on Drupal.org, but also indirect contributions such as spectacular case studies and well-known brands that use Drupal, which contribute to the marketing of Drupal. And uh, just quickly on the open source category, this has its own criteria. So we will look at the problem definition. How significant is the problem this project is trying to solve? Um, and does the does it strike a balance in, in assessing the project's usefulness in terms of the number of people it helps, but also significance in terms of how much it helps the small or large group of users? We'll look at the presentation and marketing. Um, so does the project communicate its goals and its objectives very, very clearly, and does it have good documentation? Um, we'll look at the community activity. Does the project enjoy contribution and engagement from non-maintainers, for example? Open source projects thrive on a new crop of interested and engaged people who are taking the project beyond its founders' original goals. For support, how actively are the maintainers and the community supporting that project and helping new users to, to implement and to deliver solutions using that project? And finally, quality and consistency. Does the project show the best that Drupal can offer? And quality metrics here can, can vary depending on the type of entry. Code quality might work for some, but not for others. Instead, we'd consider that a project, uh, so how a project is built and delivered to a high standard without any rough edges or clearly unfinished areas and bonus consideration for projects that have a published roadmap that is being consistently delivered against. So those are the judging criteria across all of the different areas. Um, how that process works once we receive those submissions is that um, well, first of all, to say that nominations are now open. You can go to events.drupal.org slash Singapore 2024, um, and you can make a submission now. We are in this webinar of how to craft an award-winning submission, and submissions themselves will close at 11.59 p.m. Singapore time on the 27th of September. Um, the judging process will then begin and end on the 11th of October, and the nominees will be announced on the 25th of October. In each category, there will be four nominees. So we say, for example, we have 12 or 20 entries for a category. The judges will bring that back down to four nominated submissions. And those nominees of those will have one runner-up and one winner. The runner-up and the winner will be announced at DrupalCon Singapore at the award ceremony on the 9th of December. Uh, there's a few rules about the project that you submit. Um, it must, of course, be a Drupal website or a Drupal open source project, and it needs to be live at the time of the ceremony. So if you have something that's in beta or under development that you'd like to be considered, it can be entered. It can be entered now, and so long as the judges are able to access it, they will assess it based on what they see. 
but at the time that we have the ceremony on the 9th of December, it must be live. If it's not live the day before, we'll have to remove it from consideration. Um, we can't accept submissions from entries that aren't accessible to the judges. So this means no intranets or private services. The judges need to be able to access the site as, as a regular user would. Um, any open source project, as I mentioned, needs to be based on Drupal. And the submission does not need, sorry, the website or project being submitted does not need to be in English. Um, the judges aren't really looking at the content or the copy within the website but the submission does need to be in English. All of the judges speak English either as a first or second language. Um, so you will need to submit in English, but the project or the website doesn't have to be in English. When you go to submit by following the links on the events.drupal.org website, you'll have a, a Google form that is, is, um, that is what you use to make your submission. And for this form, aim for clarity and um, brevity or briefness in your submissions without losing sight of the key points that make your entry compelling. In our previous experience running other Splash Awards, there will be entries that have very, very long-winded submissions that the judges, the judges have a limited amount of time to look at each entry. So the longer the entry doesn't necessarily mean the better the consideration. Like any kind of sales pitch, you have to work um, that balance point between giving enough information and not giving too much information. Um, so when it's time to prepare your submission, take the time to craft your response before entering into the form. Um, you're more than welcome, of course, to use AI, ChatGPT, or anything else to help you submit that. And it may be worthwhile writing out your submission in a Microsoft Word document or a Google Doc beforehand, just so that if you lose your internet connection or something, that you don't lose the content that you're entering. Um, we've got some tips here for your submission. Um, Review the categories and select the best fits. If you're not sure, you can reach out to us. We'll have some more details about that later. We're always available for your questions. Um, make sure that you answer all of the questions on the form, remembering to keep things succinct and short um, and share the, share the workload. Get your team members involved. Make this a team effort. Um, we have certainly found that the agencies and the developers who put more effort into their Splash Award submissions and involve more people in the process are more likely to pick up a nomination and a win. Um, get fresh eyes before you check it out, incorporate any feedback that you get, make sure the copy is of the highest quality that you can and make sure that your submission fits with your brand. Remember that if you are nominated, you will be showcased at the Splash Awards, <laughs> excuse me, and if you win, your website's going to be up there um, for, for everybody to see. So just make sure that that's consistent with your brand and the, the message that you want to send. Um, in addition, on the next slide, um, you must make sure that you have approval from your client and ask the client for a testimonial. We, when, we, when we shortlist down to the list of nominees, we will contact each of these clients to make sure that they do accept being part of the Splash Awards because we'll be representing their brand, telling their story, and we need to make sure that they're comfortable with that. So please make sure you talk to your client before you make the submission to confirm that they're comfortable. And leave time to fill in the form. Don't try to leave it to the last minute. There will be no extensions. And um, finally on tips, um, you can check out the International Splash Awards for context and inspiration over on splashawards.org. And you can also watch uh, this year's Australian New Zealand Splash Awards presentation that we recorded at DrupalSouth.org slash awardsvid2024. Um, we would encourage you to reach out to previous winners and nominees to congratulate them and also to seek their input. Um, they, I'm not sure that all of the, I should clarify, if you're in Australia and New Zealand and you've been nominated or won a Splash Award before, you can enter the Splash Awards. They do cover Asia and Asia Pacific. So you can take part in this event as well, um, but you're also encouraged to reach out to previous winners and ask them and say, what do you think it was that made you a winner? And they may want to help you with that. Um, finally, follow us on social media to catch all of the latest announcements. Uh, so that's it from me. Again, thank you very, very much for coming. Um, we'll open up now to any questions. I haven't been able to follow the chat as we go along. Um, so I'm going to flick back over there now. Um, the chat's very can. quiet at the moment. Um, but I'm sure there's a lot of information that had to be absorbed just then. So we'll give everyone a minute or two. Uh, 
Oh, perfect. I've got questions coming in. I will also say if you don't think of a question now, you are more than welcome to reach out to us uh, separately as well. Um, but I do have a question here asking, um, so can we apply multiple website addresses in one form since the project is multi-site? I think, yes, that's okay. Um, what what I would suggest in that case is you're, you're, you're talking about a project that happened. revolve. Sorry. Oh, good. Oh, sorry, I, I thought I heard something. Um, so, uh, yes, for, for submitting multiple sites as part of a project, you can definitely do that. I would suggest for the form, uh, look for one website that is sort of the, the leading site or the main site that you want to communicate. The judges won't have time to review every site in a multiple site submission. They will look at the first one. Um, but certainly you can submit a project that had multiple sites included in it. Perfect. Hopefully that helps. Um, another question I've got here around the criteria. Does it work if the agency who built the site is based out of Asia or Asia Pacific region where the site is for the client who works for Asia, Asia Pacific region, but have their headquarters based out of the US or Europe? Good Are question. Eligible? It, it, it does it does work they are eligible the intention here is that this this you know, being a region focused event the splash awards for asia and asia pacific is for sites that are for people in asia and the asia pacific region so whether or not the agency is in asia or not is is not important what matters is who the website is for if the website is for an audience in that region then it's eligible Perfect. Um, I don't have any other questions here yet, so we might give it 30 seconds or so in case anyone else thinks of something else. Um, but I'm sure once you've had a chance to go and have a look at the Splash Awards website, you've had a look at the form, potentially you've started working on your nomination, you might have questions at that point. Um, if you wouldn't mind jumping to the next slide for me, then we've got some avenues for you to get in touch with us. Um, so. One option is the events at drupalasia.org email address. Um, and then we also, there we go, we've also got the Drupal Slack channel. So you can look this one up, uh, drupalcon-singapore-slash-awards-discussion. Um, and you can pop any questions you have in there. Uh, I do have another one here in terms of questions. Uh, if you need us to share links uh, in social media for the event, uh, let us know. Not Yep, so that's, yep, fine. Um, and another one here is, does the site have to be for a client or for a community? It can be for either. Um, it, there's, there's, there's no restriction in that regard. I, I, should, I should add on the topic of community, thanks for the question. Um, with those scoring criteria, um, it's worth bearing in mind that the, in, in our experience with the two previous Flash Awards that we've run in Australia and New Zealand, the community score really matters. So if you're able to talk about how the site benefits the Drupal community or the community that it's built for through code contribution or developing awareness, um, that's a really important category to put a bit of focus on. Okay. Um, well, it looks like that's all the questions and I'm conscious we're getting closer to the hour um, time up. So We'll probably wrap it up there. I just want to remind everyone again, 27th of September, 11.59 p.m. Singapore time is the cutoff time. If you don't make that time, unfortunately, we can't offer an extension and we can't offer a late submission. So please pop a note in your calendar for the week prior to finalise your submission and make sure it's all polished um, and submitted on time. Um, but otherwise, we are all very much looking forward to reading your nominations and wish you all the best of luck. So thank you, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you, everyone. Remember that we're here to help. We're here to help you win an award. So please reach out with any questions. Great. Thanks all. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye.